Welcome to Tour Tron. If you're a traveler and love nature, then you are in the right place. Please subscribe to us and press the bell icon. Some places in our world don't seem to belong to Earth at all, whether natural or man-made. They've got a weirdly otherworldly quality to them. You question the meaning of their existence. You wonder why and how they came to be. Sometimes they're just eerie. Sometimes they've got extremely dark histories, and sometimes they may feel like the gateway to hell itself. And no, that's not an exaggeration, because some of the places on this list are actually referred to as such. So, let's take a look at some of the weirdest places on our planet. But wait, I want to hear from you. Have you ever visited a place that seems like it's not from this world? Share your experiences in the comments below. These are our picks for the top 20 weird places to visit. The Catacombs of Paris. Imagine exploring a labyrinth of dark galleries and tunnels filled with the remains of the dead. Deep under the streets of Paris, Unlike the Roman catacombs of old, built by the first Christians in the first century, trying to escape persecution, the Paris catacombs are quite recent. They were only built in the 18th century. The reason? Overcrowded cemeteries and an excess of dead bodies. There were already a lot of quarries around Paris from which stones had been mined and used to build Notre Dame and the Louvre. These abandoned quarries were turned into tombs, and the bodies of the dead began to be transferred there. This stopped the overcrowding of the cemeteries, and it was less dangerous for the living people since having thousands of people rotting in mass graves is hardly ideal. In fact, writers from the time have described the miasma from the cadavers that always hung about Paris. With the French Revolution, and the reign of terror, more bodies started piling up. They were directly buried in the catacombs, which had come to be known as the Empire of the Dead. Now the catacombs are open to the public. There are two parts to it. The ossuary, where the bones and skulls of the dead have been deposited and are the biggest draw to visitors, and the crypts, which have the remains of many famous figures like Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, and Napoleon. The graves are unnamed and unmarked, and the rich lie side by side with the common people. It's a place of great equality. The ossuary, on the other hand, has bones lining the walls and built into columns. It's a strange and eerie place, but the idea is to encourage people to reflect on death philosophically. Dana Kill Depression. This place is so hot and barren that it's often referred to as a gateway to hell and a land of death, a natural depression that's 410 feet below sea level. This is the hottest place on earth, but that's not what makes it hellish. It's the multitude of sulfurous and acidic pools found in the depression. The Dana Kill Depression is no doubt beautiful, but it's no less deadly for all that. It holds the official record of being the hottest place in the world. Salt mountains, fissures that send out hissing steam of vapor, sulfurous pools, and acidic lakes are the norm of the place. The area has hues ranging from blue and green to red and orange making it a sight worth seeing. It's also got two volcanoes surrounding it, with Mount Erta Ale being an active volcano with a crater lake filled with molten lava. All of it put together looks like something out of Star Wars. But that's probably one of the reasons that it's one of Ethiopia's top attractions and people might travel for hours to see it. Whether you're a scientist, a miner looking for salt slabs, or a tourist, the Dana Kill Depression has something exciting to offer you. You mustn't be put off by the sight of dead insects and birds around the area, 
since it's a natural phenomenon that occurs because of the place's air. Also, you might have to be careful about border tensions between Eritrea and Ethiopia, since the depression is very close to the Eritrea border. Cooper Petty Ever thought of a town that is made up of dugouts so that everyone lives underground? Well, that's exactly what you get with Australia's Cooper Petty, where the scorching daytime temperatures make it quite impossible to survive on the surface. Another thing Cooper Petty is known for, and the reason why no one at all lives in the town, is that it's the opal capital of the world. The first white people settled down in Cooper Petty in 1915, when the presence of opal was detected. But it wasn't like it was an unknown territory before that. The native Aboriginal people roamed through the area. It was considered the traditional land of the Arabana people. The population of the town to this day is tiny, housing only about 2,000 people. These people in caves cut into the hillsides and there's very little plant life all around. Mining activity has gone down in recent years and Cooper Petty has become a center of tourism. After all, where else would you have the opportunity to see discarded opal mines turned into kitchens, dining rooms, and bedrooms? Shoveled and built by the homeowners themselves. Sometimes homes even come equipped with bars and swimming pools. Although scarcity of water is a definite problem here. You can even attend an underground church service and browse the town's cave bookstore. But if you're walking around the town, you'll want to watch your step around open holes that lead to deep mine shafts. Crooked Forest There are a lot of unsolved mysteries in the world, and the Crooked Forest in Poland happens to be one of those. Why is there an entire forest filled with pine trees that are bent at the base, and usually all in the same direction? What caused those J-shaped trees? There are 400 trees in the plantation, and most of them seem to be bent in that weird way. The theories range from magnetic forces in the earth that cause the trees to grow that curve, to manipulations by the farmers who first planted them. Some people think heavy snowfall may be responsible, but if so, why is that not seen in all other trees of the region? Another theory says trees were flattened by tanks during World War II when they were young, but the trunks are too smooth and show no signs of destruction. Whatever the reason might be, it remains a complete mystery in this day and age. That forest was planted in 1930, and the town of Griffino nearby emptied out during World War II. It then remained unoccupied for decades following the war, and people only started returning in the 1970s. The original natives who knew the truth probably carried the answer to their graves. The Door to Hell Known as the Darvaza Gas Crater, the continually burning crater in a remote corner of Turkmenistan is popularly known as the Door to Hell. It was first described as such by adventurer George Cronus. With a grant from the National Geographic to study the place, Cronus had heat-resistant gear which allowed him to get close to the crater. Why is the crater always burning? Well, the story goes that a Soviet oil rig fell into the crater of gas, the crater of natural gas, back in 1971. The Soviets set the crater alight since it would be too dangerous to have the gas constantly leaking out. Since then, it hasn't stopped burning. As to the authenticity of the story, we can't really verify that. The huge hole is about 230 meters across, and the glow from the fires can be spotted from miles away. In fact, the heat causes strange mirages around Turkmenistan's Karakum Desert, and the stink of sulfur and natural gases fills the air. Despite all this, tourists and scientists still make the trek to see this fiery pit. We can't even blame them. What an otherworldly sight it would make, right? The desert has become a quite popular camping spot because of the Darwaza gas crater. Salvation Mountain Located in the lower desert of Southern California, 
Near Palm Springs in Salton Sea, Salvation Mountain is a splash of joyous color against a bland background. It's quite a funny looking place at first sight when the colorful but powerful message of God is love is the first thing that catches your eye. Made by local resident Leonard Knight, with waste material like discarded automobile parts and windows in donated pots of paint, Salvation Mountain has various verses from the Bible and Christian sayings painted all over. The mountain is made of the local adobe clay and is 50 feet in height. Thus, it is clearly visible from miles away. Knight had spent 30 years building it, and it would be there every day for years until he passed away in 2014. It's quite possible to climb the mountain and explore all the art. Tourists visit regularly. They just have to be careful of the extremely hot temperatures. There are volunteer organizations that work to still keep up the monument, since the extreme weather might otherwise wear it away. There is also a museum on the premise, and visitors often leave behind objects on the mountain to show their devotion to God. Fly Geyser Journeying from Southern California to Northern Nevada, we come to the Fly Geyser, or Fly Ranch Geyser. You might be surprised to find out that this multicolored geyser in the middle of the desert, which spews water high up into the air, was the result of an accident. But it really was. The first geyser was formed back in 1916, when local residents tried to drill a well, but abandoned it after finding out that the water was too hot to be used for irrigation. The same thing happened again 50 years later, when a geothermal company drilled a hole for a well. For decades now, scalding hot water has been shooting out of these openings, which were just left unplugged. The three large mounds that have formed as a result of calcium carbonate deposits are in a variety of green and red hues because of special kinds of algae that grow in hot, moist environments. It's probably why this place looks kind of artificial and fantastical, but it's not. It's a natural wonder that was formed due to human intervention. Isn't that a marvel? Towering at a height of 12 feet, this gorgeous geyser is definitely worth a visit if you're in the vicinity of Nevada. Fly Ranch, whose owners were responsible for the first geyser back in the 1910s, still exists, and you're allowed to visit. Buzluza Monument Next, we do come to a man-made monument, and a pretty strange-looking one at that. The Buzluza Monument is the largest ideological monument in Bulgaria and was built by the Bulgarian Communist Party on the Buzlidza Peak. But what for? Well, it was built to commemorate the first meeting of a group of socialists led by Dmitar Bagloev. Eventually, they would become the Bulgarian Social Democratic Party and then the Bulgarian Communist Party. This building is an example of futuristic architecture, but alas, is now closed to the public since its structure has become so severely weakened. The architect was Georgi Stolvo. The design features a wide, round, saucer-shaped building with a tower on the side. The tower is topped by a star. According to Stolvo, his inspiration was both the ancient greats and the possibilities of the future. The building may look like something from a science fiction film, but it also pays homage to the Romans. Sadly, the building isn't in great shape now after the political scene in Bulgaria shifted. Mosaics on the exterior of the building have been destroyed by vandals. Windows have been broken and copper ornaments have been stolen. The beautiful mosaics on the inside remain, but have not been preserved carefully. Although the monument technically belongs to the Bulgarian government, the current government has made no efforts for its upkeep. The US Getty Foundation has pitched a plan for its conservation, however. Spotted Lake How exactly can a lake be spotted? We're used to thinking of water as being one flowing whole, right? But what if you were to see the lake in British Columbia's Okanagan Valley? It usually resembles a leopard. Because of the high deposits of mineral like calcium, magnesium sulfates, and sodium sulfates, there are lots of color on the lake. 
It depends on the concentration of whichever mineral in whichever spot of the water. For example, a blue spot is because of the concentration of magnesium sulfate, while a green spot can be the concentration of magnesium sulfate mixed with calcium carbonate. All the minerals and salts are runoffs from the hills surrounding the lake. Long before the British happened upon the lake, it was considered a very sacred site by the First Nations people. They called it Kliluk, or Spotted Lake. The indigenous people of the Okanagan Nation knew all about the healing properties of the different minerals in the lake. Each circle had a different medical use. The land is owned by the Okanagan Nation now, and no type of development is allowed on it. This is to protect the lake and its surrounding environment because the minerals in the lake were misused for ammunition purposes during World War I. The visitor center at the lake says that the lake used to look even more beautiful and colorful before this period of mining. The Petrifying Well There's one of the weirdest phenomena we've ever heard of in North Yorkshire, England. A well that turns everything into stone. Found near a small but picturesque town, Knaresborough, the petrifying well and the cave near it is associated with a witch called Mother Shipton. She was said to be an oracle who predicted a lot of what happened in Tudor England. But Mother Shipton's cave is not what we're concerned with here. No, it's the well that petrifies anything that is placed inside it. But what does that mean in geology terms? Well, petrifying is the process by which minerals deposit over an object and it slowly turns to stone. It's like the formation of stalactites and stalagmites, except much faster. Seriously, the water here is so rich with minerals that it only takes a few months for the water to turn a stuffed teddy bear into a stone teddy bear. These stone teddies are available for purchase in the gift shop by the dozen. People have been visiting this cave since the 15th century and leaving things behind to petrify. That makes it one of England's oldest tourist destinations. The water was believed to be a miracle cure for any kind of disease, and the side of the natural well looked almost like a giant skull. It's just weird and spooky experiences all around with this well. The Great Blue Hole a bizarre natural triumph, mesmerizing the hunters and scientists with its haunting attraction. This mysterious, huge circular blue sinkhole, blending harmoniously in turquoise Caribbean colors, is a breathtaking wonder hidden underwater. A beauty in its 300 meters, 984 feet across, and plunges to 120 meters, 394 feet deep. One that both fascinates and scares. It has been talked about by people again and again. The distinctiveness of the Great Blue Hole is not only its magnitude, rather, it also displays the mysterious origin. Thought to have been formed from the time when there was an ice age and the formation remains mysterious from the geological viewpoint. The cave submerged as the sea began to inundate and an enormous limestone sinkhole was left behind. Its perfect circular shape and almost transfixed blue coloration is one of the unusual things about it that add to others and the whole planet. However, Things become even stranger as the secret of the blue hole becomes its bottom element. Members of the crew descending into its watery depths have met distorted settings. Everything from fossilized stalactites to the forms of the large predators of this deep hidden in the shadows. Its depths only reveal a little of the secrets that are always there. Thus, still sparking the interest of researchers and people who love excitement alike. Strange as it may seem, the Great Blue Hole is what attracts divers seeking to get a feel for its depths. 
and unravel the mysteries found within. It's an example of extraordinary and sometimes unbelievable beauty that dwells in the phenomena of our planet and reminds us how amazing the world is by the things that we do not know about. The Island of the Dolls Also called Isla de las Muñecas, lying in the canals of Xochimilco, which is near Mexico City, might seem fictional and created out of a scary fairy tale. The tiny spot inside is adorned with thousands of dolls and covered by dark mystery and superstition. The trees are already like this small village. It is the dolls that are either deeply weathered or almost purely preserved, hanging aristocratically and inviting notion to those who care to visit. The story behind this eerie island goes back to the caretaker, Mr. Don Julian Santana Berrera, who just, who, just by hearsay, was a resident of a young girl who drowned in the canals. Tortured by compassion for her own fault of not being able to save her, and troubled by the spirit of the girl, Don Julian began placing dolls across the entire island in the 1950s, thinking they would help him keep away the ghost of the girl. Over time, he gathered toys from litter and neighborhood kids, putting everyone he could find in every possible space. And the number of little creatures outgrew the thousand number. Tourists who have visited the island say the place has a very eerie aura, with the wind whistling through the doll's skeleton, conducting an orchestra of blowing over the water. The figures, through exposure to the weather, have developed a grim look with damaged faces and missing limbs that have merely helped to maintain the reputation of the abandoned island. Although Don Julian's death took place in 2001, Doll's Island still strikes people as a peculiar place of interest for those who are fond of the ominous or the out of the ordinary. His strange memorial to the old unsettled spirits attracts paranormal seekers and travelers from all walks of life, who all want to get a glimpse into the strange world of these spirits. Mount Thor. It can be found in a Uatuk National Park on Baffin Island in Nunavut, Canada. And it is certainly not any mountain. It is a personification of nature's fearlessness. Its most amazing feature is the 1250 meter pure vertical drop that makes it the highest vertical crag on the planet and extraordinary to watch for onlookers. The nearly indivisible precipice of rock not only defies the climber's resolve, but also challenges the very idea of what is naturally achievable, making it appear as if some giant has cleft the mountain in two with a huge sword. Named after the Norse god of thunder, Thor, the mountain is majestic, with its enormous body ruling over all other formations with the harsh surroundings. The sheer precipitousness and grandeur are like nothing from this planet or an imaginary world. Climbers frequently refer to the monolith as holy and terrible at the same time because of its terrible weather and high technical difficulties. Although those climbers are the only ones with close contact with it, still it is worth trying and being part of the landscape, which is not a usual setting. The surroundings, dominated by fajors and glaciers, improve the dramatic appearance of the mountain and make the ascent to Mount Thor adventure into the untamed lap of nature, which yields the most amazingly beautiful and extreme wonders of the world. Lake Natron Located in Tanzania is a natural wonder far beyond human imagination. Located in the northern part of the country, close to the Kenyan border, is a salty lake with a landscape that looks like it's borrowed from a science fiction book. The lake is renowned for its high alkalinity, a pH value up to 10.5, caused by sodium carbonate and other minerals from surrounding hills pouring into it. This causes most of the life forms to have abnormal living conditions, 
and only the strong and resistant animals like the alkaline tilapia and huge groups of flamingos attracted by the high levels of algae are able to survive there. The frightening fact about Lake Natron is that it turns dead animals into statues through a natural process similar to petrification. With a strong alkaline characteristic of the water, they appear petrified, often accumulating a bizarre petrified wildlife collection along the shore. On top of the lake's mysterious and alien-like appearance, these microbes that thrive in these salty conditions are what tint the water red. The lake holds vibrant red and orange colors, which are distinct from the other monotonous surroundings and therefore make it look fascinating as well as weird. Despite it being a very harsh environment, Lake Natron is one of the areas where the rare flamingo flame breeds and adventurous and photography-loving travelers are drawn by its landscape, which is unique and atmospheric. The lake is the habitat of strange and unusual, one-minded fantastical creations of nature. The Wave A natural wonder which is located in the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument in Arizona, USA. It is a geological phenomenon that does not exist in regular landscapes. This awe-inspiring structure, crafted from Jurassic Age sandstone, bears resemblance to a massive when frozen wave, cresting with undulating patterns in swirling colors across the landscape of the desert. Its conspicuous levels, shaped by thousands of years of chaotic wind and erosion, have produced a surrealistic, fantastical scenery that seems to be a scene from a different world. The wave's colors are united in the enchanting combination of reds, oranges, pinks, and yellows, which is a never-changing, ever-changing scene of light and shadow. This pristine paradise is fragile and unrepeatable. Therefore, entrance is limited to a maximum of 20 people per day by lottery, so that the place remains untouched by human hand. It is a trip in itself to reach the wave, and you will need a permit to go there, and an adventurous hike in rocky and unmarked terrain. And this is how its popularity grows. With no apparent way out, this trip to this natural wonder is not only a physical, but also a navigational challenge. These two challenges emphasize the isolated nature of the area and how noteworthy the unrefined view is. Visitors to the wave often get amazed by the profound silence, a new dimension of the alien terrain which is very different from what they're used to. Doorway to Hell Hidden in the middle of Iceland's barren and wild scenery is a fictional chasm known as Hell's Gate. This place borrows the mysterious beauty and volcanic might that only Iceland's volcanic formations possess, where one can almost see the Earth's burning breath. Recollect that vast inexpressible break from which sulfurous vapors ooze, permeating the region with a foggy mist that hides the edge between the land of the living and the underworld. The doorway to hell is surrounded by amber-colored lava which is a witness to the violent eruptions which over the millennia have been known to scar the landscape. Roughly shaped rocks and cooling lava form a very risky way of balancing the crumbling edge of the abyss that makes tremor-like the ground. Cracks of stream and boiling mud puddles scar the landscape, spewing columns of steam that swirl in the atmosphere, confounding the visitors with an uncanny and strange ambiance. In the middle of the lifeless expanse, water in the pool jitters persistently, as if it's still being stirred by unseen powers. The water deeply colored with minerals, originating from the heart of the earth, is irradiated with a strange luminescent quality offered by this odd location. Legends claim that some old ghosts and beasts vacate within the water as doorkeepers of the world's entrance gate. Eternal Flame Falls Chestnut Ridge Park in northwestern New York, USA contains a natural phenomenon that looks like something out of the world of nature. Eternal Flame Falls This small waterfall is not only awesome for its charming beauty, but also for some interesting natural phenomena that occur in its cascading waters. 
a little grotto at the bottom of the waterfall emits natural gas, which is employed to start a fire that burns in the heart of the running water. This silvery golden flame, which seeps through the web of the waterfall, is intensely mesmerizing. The meeting place of fire and water, the two primary forces that are often incompatible, harmoniously living together in a rare occurrence. It can come in different sizes, sometimes drowned by the waterfall, other times burning brightly for everyone to see. Depending on the glass flow and the water volume, the deep-seated geological formations are considered to be the source of methane, which rises through cracks and fissures from the ground level up to the flame site. Eternal flame falls defies our usual notions about nature's functions, providing an unusual sight that blurs the line between what is conceivable and what is thought to be supernatural. Battleship Island Hashima Island, which is also called Battleship Island, as a result of its naval resemblance, is a showcase of industrialization and past southern desertion of Japan. This small island once was the very best illustration of humankind's ingenuity and persistence. But now it's full of people, and they extracted all the coal from the seabed. From the late 19th century until 1974, Hashima Island was a thriving community surrounded by residential buildings, schools, and stores, all protected by a seawall that guaranteed the inhabitants of the island from the capriciousness of the sea. Nevertheless, with the shift of Japan from coal to other sources of energy, the mines were abandoned, while the landscapes of the island now looks like a ghost town with just silence to go with it. Whenever one visits Battleship Island, the impression remains that it's simply frozen time. Its decrepit concrete buildings and empty streets tell the tale of a past long begone. The wall on the sea, which used to be a sanctuary, is now a port of anguish. So the wall is an eerie legacy to the shimmering field of the waves. The island's isolation and decay have led to its obsession by urban explorers and historians alike, who are seduced by its forlorn aesthetics and the stories preserved inside the walls that are crumbling down. Having been inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List, it embodies the idea that progress is not permanent and ages are indestructible. Lake Hillier Lake Hillier scenically perched just off Middle Island in the region of southern West Australia, is a remarkable natural wonder, which appears as if it had been borrowed from the pages of fairy tales. Different from other lakes, the remarkable feature of Lake Hillier is its eye-catching pink hue in a dramatic contrast with the deep blue color of the ocean and the greenish color of the land. Due to the salt and alpha carotene in the lake, a 600 meters long pink lake that remains a vivid pink throughout the year, regardless of the season, which makes it a real eye-opener against the natural plateau of the surrounding landscape. Surprisingly, the cause of the lake's weird colors still attracts scientists. Accordingly, it is proposed that the pink color is due to Duna Lila Salina, a microalgae variety that proliferates in the lake's high salinity environment. These algae are the producers of carotenoids, a pigment that is found in carrots and that also produces the color of lakes. The microalgae are not the only inhabitants of the salt crusts. Some of the halophilic bacteria may also contribute to the pink pigment. Isolated either by air or by sea, Lake Hillier exudes that out-of-the-world feeling that attracts tourists and photographers from all corners of the globe. From above, the lake looks like a painting of vivid colors with the austere Australian landscape, which immediately enchants and fascinates. Valley of the Dolls In the serene yet eerie landscape of Nagaro, a remote village in the Aya Valley of Shikoku, Japan, lies a site that is both heartwarming and haunting, the Valley of the Dolls. This unexplained attraction came up through the creative activity of Ayano Tsukimi, who came back to her village and felt that most of its people had moved away or were already gone. 
Tsukimi then found herself uneasy with the increasing loneliness of the environment, and she started creating life-size dolls, each appearing of a farmer or a family member, and placed them all over the village. They were appearing in various poses of their normal life. Now, very many dolls can be found in this village. They sit in classrooms, work in fields, or simply relax in chairs. The overall effect resembles the living daily routine, which is gone already, and only dolls display it. They are part of our landscape. Their costumes are genuine, and their faces are painted in a flattering way to describe the past of the village. The impact is mysterious and sad, but not sad. A somber message about the dim future of village life and another sign of the aging Japanese society. Housed in the Valley of the Dolls are artists and photographers ensnared by the strange but beautiful mixture of art, memory, and orphaned souls. Upon entering Nagaro, visitors will see these dolls engaged in silent discussion, fishing in muddy waters, or tilling their gardens, which leaves a haunting thought about the deaths that occurred in the village in the past. The strangely eerie message presents a different and bizarre view of the world, where the boundaries between the animate and inanimate dissolve, and where we experience a vivid moment of presence, mixed with absence that seems locked in time. And there you have it! Drop your thoughts in the comments! Ever been to any of these spots? Give us the scoop! If you enjoyed this video, show us some love by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel for more awesome content in the future. See you in the next video.